In today's video, we're going to have a look at macro programming once again. We do have one video out in the blog already, so if you haven't checked out video number one, go and give that one a look. And if you've already seen it, uh, it's fantastic. Have a look at this new one. So to get started with our second macro video here, I'm just going to create up a quick little program that's going to do nothing more than drill four holes. Okay, so we're going to go to the first hole location, which is going to be at X one inch, Y one inch. Let's come down in Z. Uh, when approaching the part, we'll come down to 0 0.1, and then we'll start our drilling, which is going to be a G81. With G81, we tell it the retract plane, we tell it how deep we want to drill, and we tell it the feed rate we want to drill at. And then after that, it's just a matter of listing off the locations we want to perform our drilling motion at, then cancel it. Okay, so let's go and step through this and have a look at our motion. So there we're at 100 thou above. There you can see we've fed down to negative 2 inches at 5 inches per minute. Rapids out of the hole, goes to the next one, and uh, wash, rinse, repeat uh, all four times. Okay, perfect. So we've got this basic G81 style drilling. So G81 is basically, it feeds all the way to depth. When it gets there, it rapids out of the hole. So what do you do if that's not the drilling motion type you want? So obviously we've got some different can cycles. We've got G82s, which we can include as well. We've got G83s, we can peck. Uh, we've got some feed in, feed out uh, can cycles as well. But still, what if that's not the motion you want to perform with this drill? Uh, let's say for an example, this is a small drill and say we pre-drilled this hole a shallow distance that we're gonna you know, feed into the hole slowly at first. Once we get to a specific depth, we're then gonna ramp it up to full feed rate down till it gets almost all the way through the part. And then that last hundred thou again, we're gonna reduce the feed rate to break through the uh, other side and then wrap it out of the hole. So that's the drilling motion type we want to perform. If it was one hole, outputting that G-code longhand wouldn't be a big deal, but if there's 100 holes, um, even copying pasting can be a little excessive if that's the, uh, the task you're trying to accomplish. So what are we going to do? We're going to do some, some macro programming. So to start our macro program, obviously it needs to have its own program number. In here, we're going to basically have the motion uh, type or motions that we need for the drilling type that we want to actually execute here. So we want to do is a feeding motion. And again, we're doing just slightly into the part. Um, so I'm, I'm forcing this to go 100 thou deep. And I'm going to also tell it exactly how fast I want it to go, which is two and a half inches per minute, which happens to be half of our programmed feed rate. Just the number I'm grabbing out of the air for now. No other uh, reasoning behind these numbers. Uh, okay, then feed down to... So we're going down to 2 inches. And I said let's go slightly short of that. So let's go down to 1.9 at the full feed rate. And then it breaks through at, again, half... Don't forget the Z there. At half the feed rate, half 2.5. And then rapids out of the hole back to the R plane, which is at 0.1. Okay. So that's the motion type for the drilling that we want to do. Um, to get this back to the program that called it, we need to include this M99. And up in our main program, so this is now our main and this is our sub. Uh, so back in the main program, we're not gonna be using this canned cycle call anymore. Basically what we need to do is get to the desired location, call the sub program. When the sub program comes back to the main, we need to move to our new location and again, recall our sub program. So we're going to have to keep on calling up this sub program every time we want to use it. So we're at X1, Y1, and we're ready for our macro call here or our sub program call here. So sub program call is M98, and then the program that you actually want to call, which is P, P10. And we're not using this anymore. So I'm just going to comment this out because we're going to reference this information a little bit later. Uh, but technically, you could delete this and everything would be uh, would be fine. So as mentioned, we're going to get to the location of the hole, call the motion type, move to the next location of the hole. We do have a G00 here, but you know, for safety reasons, uh, we may want to include a G00 on this line now. 
And then we're going to again recall the motion type. So I've just kind of sped things up. And again, we're going to include the G00 here just in case our subprogram uh, finished in a G01 motion. And since we're not doing the can cycle anymore, we can get rid of that cancel. And that's that's it for subprogramming. Let's have a look at the motion type here. So you can see it's feeding down to 1.9. It's now switched to five inches per minute. And it should switch to two and a half now for the final, uh, final little bit, which it did. So top of the hole, two and a half inches per minute down to 100 thou. Full feed rate down to 1.9. Everything works great. So now I did mention we're talking about macros here. And all that we've done so far is a sub-program. So how does this become a macro? What if the hole is a different shape? Maybe it's a little bit deeper. Um, maybe our feed rate's different. Right now, this is, is hard-coded. This sub-program will only create one motion type, uh, one feed rate and we can't change anything about it. So that's when we get into our macro variation of this. So instead of an M98, we're gonna use a G65. Everything will execute the same. You can see right now, I go to simulate this. All this information is coming out the same. What's the difference between 65 and 98? When we use 65, we can start passing information to this sub-program now. So now in here, I could include an R0.1. I could, could include a Z minus, uh, well, let's just make these different, Z0.2, Z minus uh, 2.2, feed rate, let's say we had an F 10.0. No, let's go 8, 8.0. Okay, so now when I'm calling up this sub-program, I'm passing these values to the sub-program. And once I'm in that subprogram, I can now use those variables to populate a Z depth, a feed rate, a retract location. And that makes this subprogram macro call a lot more flexible. So what we need to do now is understand how to retrieve these values in our subprogram. So whenever you're getting into macro programming, you should have a user manual for your control with you especially at times like these, this will be very useful. And referencing my manual, I'm using the Haas manual here, which is 99%, maybe a little bit less, 95% the same as Fanuc. There are some, some variations, so just be aware of that. So when I use an R value, so an R value doesn't automatically mean a retract plane. Uh, so for our can cycles, obviously it does. But what an R value is, is it's a value that's gonna be stored and according to my book, in variable number 18. So I'm just going to comment this out. So number 18 is what I've defined as R in the can cycle. I could put an equals in there. Keep in mind, these are in brackets, so the control is not going to execute anything in here. I'm not changing any codes. I'm just making a reference. I've also got a Z in here, and then Z is number 26. And I've also got an F. And according to my book, F is number nine. So now I can start plugging these numbers in where I've got Z's, R's, and F's. Okay, so let's start with the R first. We know that our retract plane of 0 0.2, we want that down here. So instead of Z 0 0.1, I'm going to say Z number 18. So whatever value is stored in 18, that's where I want to retract to. Up here, that's setting variable number 18 to 0 0.2. Okay, now as far as how deep am I going, um, that's this guy right here. So the final depth of the hole is Z. So Z, instead of minus 2, Z is going to be number 26. Okay, which is in this case minus 2.2. Now with this, I can add some extra flexibility here and that's how deep do I want this first cut to be? And how close to the bottom of the hole do I want to drill at the full feed rate? So up here, I'm just going to insert, say, A. Now you can make this whatever you want. And I'm going to say A is going to be minus 0 0.25. So that's how deep I want to drill at the reduced feed rate. And B is going to be the absolute 
coordinate of where I want to, uh, again, slow the feed rate back down to the, the half feed rate while breaking through the bottom of this hole. So for this instance, I'm going to go down to, uh, uh, let's say, two inches. So now that I've added those two variables into my macro call, I'm going to make notes about them down here as to how they're coming in. So an A, as you uh, may have guessed already, is going to come in as variable number one. This is my A variable. And then number two is coming in as B. Now, it might also be useful as well here to, to make a note about, you know, what is A, what is B, um, especially if someone else is going to be using this program or troubleshooting it. Um, they won't know what you've done and why you've done it or how you're handling these variables. So at any point when you're doing macro programming, strongly recommend you document what it is you're doing, especially uh, not for someone else, but even yourself, you come back to this in a month from now and uh, you won't have a clue what you were doing. So documentation is key. Okay, so now that we've got our variables in there, we can start to work some of that uh, uh, macro magic down here in this sub program. So to start, let's update our initial feed movement here. So we're saying we want to feed down partial, uh, the partial amount, which is the variable that we're passing with A. So I'm going to just update this to be number one. That's pretty straightforward. Now our feed rate, uh, we're saying that we want to do this feed motion at half of the programmed feed rate. So our program feed rate is eight inches per minute, which is coming in as variable number nine. But we want half of that programmed feed rate so let's go ahead and do a little equation here. We're going to do our variable number nine divided by two. And anytime we want to do calculations, um, we're going to increase those calculations inside of square brackets. So when this word, this uh, G code word gets called, it's actually performing this equation first and applying it into the F word. Okay, so that'll give us half of eight, which is obviously. Uh, four inches per minute. So this is going to be duplicated down here. So let's just copy and paste that. Because when we're breaking through the bottom of our hole, we want the the uh, reduced feed rate. And then when we're doing the middle of the hole, uh, we're going full feed rate, we can just code in variable number nine, which is our eight inches per minute. So only one more variable to update, and that's this guy here. So this is where we're transitioning to the reduced feed rate after drilling the majority of the hole, which up here I've said is coming in as the B variable, which is negative two inches, which is variable number two. So let's go ahead and update this to number two. Okay, so with that call updated, so there's our G65 and the P call, and all of the variables we're passing to our subprogram. And you can see in the graphic scheme, we are getting one good hole here and the others nothing's happening over there because keep in mind these other holes are still being referenced to the subprogram through a subprogram call subprogram does not pass variables so when this subprogram is called it's reading these blank variables nothing is going to be stored there so in a future video we're going to get into the different types of variables you can use how long i guess the easy way to say this is how long they live for these common variables here basically as soon as you hop into that that macro program those values are populated but as soon as you leave that macro program using the common variables these variables get cleared out back to zero so that's why you're seeing when we're hopping into this sub program again um, you would think these values might still be populated from the previous call. However, that's not the case. Those values will all be zero. So we need to update this line of code. And I'm just going to copy paste. You can see the hole updated in the graphics. Same thing for our, th our third hole. Same thing for our fourth hole. Okay, so we've got our four, ho four holes all doing this this new motion type. So let's just do a quick little step through of the program here and see if we're actually getting the motion type and feed rates at the correct heights. So we've wrapped it to 0.1. I guess that's probably not a good idea because our <laughs> program is going to retract uh, up a little bit higher. So maybe we should increase this to 0.5 to start. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. So there we are at a half inch. And now we're going to get our, our sub program call. 
which comes down and it should be feeding down. It looks like I skipped over a hole there accidentally. We should be feeding down to number one, which is our A value, which is minus a quarter of an inch. Down here, we're at minus a quarter of an inch. Notice the feed rate, four inches per minute, which is half of our programmed or our initial call for our program feed rate of eight inches per minute. So that's good. So now we should be feeding down the rest of the way at the full feed rate of eight inches per minute, all the way down to Z negative 2.2. So let's step forward one block here. Ah, see, there you go. So computers are more accurate than humans. I said it should have been going down to negative 2.2, uh, but the computer did exactly what I told it to do. I told it to go down to variable number B, which is negative two inches, not 2.2. 2.2 is the next step, right? So there's our negative two, eight inches per minute. The next step will be to the full depth, 2.2, at the reduced feed rate, four inches per minute. Next, we should be wrapping it up out of the hole all the way back to our R value of 0 0.2. And there's that move there. And that's gonna repeat at all four hole locations. Okay, so I said at the beginning of this video, uh, a reason why we might want to do this style of call was to cut down on copy pasting. You know, if we did this longhand, we could just copy and paste this at our each location. So we've had to do a little bit of copying and pasting. And I did say that I was assuming that I'm working on a Haas machine. So we this is the best option on the Haas. However, if you are working on a Fanuc, there is something different you could do to reduce this code even further. And with Fanuc, you can do a G66 macro call. G66 is a modal uh, macro call. So basically this would behave exactly the same way as a can cycle would. So you wouldn't have to in fact keep calling the macro over and over again. You would call it once. And the same way that you do a, a, a drilled hole, you would just specify each new location afterwards. And it re would repeat this macro over and over again. You could change a variable if you needed to, same as your, your can cycles, but uh, that's a Fanuc style code, not a, a Haas code. Another option to clean up your code a little bit further, and we're gonna to touch on this a little bit more in the next video, and that's making this subprogram call into a custom G code. So with that, instead of calling up a G65, so let me just copy and paste this here. Instead of calling this G65P1000, we can set the control to actually reference this program number. Now this is where it does matter what program number you program it as. If we program this as program number 9010 on our Haas control, on our Haas control, we can say that program number 9010 is called with a custom G code. And that on our Haas control G211 is the same as typing G65P0010. So we're gonna go through how to do that in the next video. Let me just get rid of this to alleviate some confusion and set this back to the normal program number. And to finish cleaning this up, let's just get rid of this. We don't need to look at that anymore. So there's our finished macro and sub program. I guess to wrap this video up, just to touch on one more thing here with these variable calls is the, the letters you used for a value completely up to you. I used obviously Z with um, how deep I want this macro program to run. I used an F word to specify the feed rate for this program. You don't have to use F for feed rate. You don't have to use Z for the depth of the operation. You could use H for the feed rate. But with G coding, a lot of us are used to thinking in the, in the manner of that an F word is a feed rate. So if you can choose variables that make sense as to what the variable is actually doing, highly recommend it. But there are no rules. The only thing that these values are doing is storing, storing the value that you specified with the letter into a specific address. So just keep that in mind during your subprogramming. So with that, we'll wrap this video. It's long enough as is. If you'd like to see more macro programming videos, uh, let us know and we'll see if we can create some more.